Developing .NET applications on a Mac has gotten immensely easier in recent years. Since the release of .NET Core, you can target Windows, Mac, or Linux. So what I want to do is go ahead and walk through setting up a .NET development environment on a Macintosh computer. What we're going to be using today is an M1 MacBook Pro that I have here, and we're just gonna walk through the process. So there's two ways we can install .NET on the computer. One is through the Microsoft Downloads page, but the other is using Homebrew on the Mac, which I would definitely recommend, especially for installing things like Python or .NET or anything like that, where it's gonna put files in multiple places using brew is gonna give you a single command to install it as well as a single command to uninstall it. So you're not having to chase things down. So to install that, we go brew, install, cask, .NET. Now we don't wanna just do .NET, we want the .NET SDK. Just the .NET by itself is just the runtime. It's not gonna actually let you build anything. So we install the .NET SDK. So instead of having to download something, and everything that goes along with it, we can just use one command from brew. And there we have it. So if I go .NET dash dash version, .NET 7 installed on our computer. Now you have a couple of different IDEs to choose from. There's a couple of free ones from Microsoft. There's Visual Studio for Mac. There's Visual Studio Code. Um, there is also a non-paid one called JetBrains Writer, which is what I personally use. I, I feel like it's the best option on a Macintosh, especially given that you can't run the full Visual Studio on here. So let's start here. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and install the Apple Silicon version of .NET Code. So we now have Visual Studio Code installed. So the first thing that we're gonna need is the C Sharp uh, which here, it's in our recommended right there. So we're gonna install the C Sharp extension for Visual Studio Code. Now, um, you can actually do a lot, a lot from the terminal using .NET. So what we're gonna do is we'll move into our dev folder. We will make a new folder. Uh, we'll do a console app, so we'll just call it console test. And once we're in here, we can use the .NET, com .NET new command to generate a new application. Now, one nice thing is that Microsoft has a series of templates that you can use to create things using the terminal. A couple of handy ones are Web API. You can generate one that has an Angular front end with it. But for our purposes, we're just going to do a console application. So we'll do .NET new console. Because I didn't give it a name, it is just um, going to use the folder that I put it in. So if we go in here, we can open our folder. And here's our .NET application. So it's all automatically going to see um, for debugging, we're going to need a few extra files that it's going to generate for us here, a task and a launch. And so we can actually debug our application right from Visual Studio Code, which is pretty handy. So it's going to run it here. And it's just a simple Hello World console application. So not much to that. My personal preference for developing on a Mac is using a program by JetBrains called Writer. Um, if you've ever used Visual Studio with ReSharper installed, Writer basically has ReSharper built into it. ReSharper is nice, but I feel like the last couple of times I tried to use it on Visual Studio, it really slowed the application down. But with it built into Writer here, it's a pretty handy IDE. So let's say I wanted to add a class to my application. We'll call this a user class and we'll give it a We'll give it some values here. Um, now, if I switch over to Visual Studio Code, you can see I have my user class here. So, you can see that I don't get autocomplete for things like this. So it does afterwards detect that it's correct, but I'm not really getting the autocomplete. So I, if I wanted to... Well, 
Well, I guess I'm not getting full autocomplete. So it did it did recognize this once I put in the uh, console test. But let's say I didn't have that in there. If I just tried to make... It's not going to recognize it. So it, it does some autocomplete, but it's more like on the page or related pages. So if you really want the full IDE experience, you're going to want to either use something like Writer or you're going to want to use something like Visual Studio for Mac. So let's go ahead and download that real quick and take a look at it. Okay, so now that we have Visual Studio installed, we can open our same application. This is one of the things I dislike about Visual Studio for Mac, is it has a terrible time finding these sometimes. Okay, so we have to point it to where Brew has installed it. So that's going to be in user, local, share, dot net, and dot net. If you want to know how to find that, you can go to brew, info, and then whatever it was that you installed. So here we can see where it installed .NET 7, and we can go into Visual Studio for Mac, and we can see we can see our project in here. Even Visual Studio for Mac can sometimes be finicky. Like it should have found that user file. Maybe it was because we created it with Writer, I don't know. But if I include that, yeah, then we get it. So, you know, this is, an, honestly, this was original, this was originally Xamarin and they've slowly added features to it, but it's not, they call it Visual Studio for Mac, but it's, it's not Visual Studio, which is why I much prefer Writer. Writer was built for Windows and Mac. It's fully functional on both. And really, if you're developing on a Mac and .NET, just do yourself a favor and, and pay for Writer. It's a better experience all around. So I hope this was useful in helping you set up and get rolling. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or if you're running across any errors. Thanks. Bye.